Welcome back to Profi Plays. I'm Profi, and we're going to be picking up again with Dungeon Crawl Classics with the Adventurers of Rose Lake. We're going into the dungeon whose name escapes me at the moment. The Black Sanctum of Sabusha the Elemental. All right, so remember we are here searching for that magical sword, which I believe is an Orcsbane sword, if I recall correctly. Yes, it is an Orcsbane sword, the sword of Wahanid. Well, haunted. I forget how I'm... I think every time I say it, I offer more than one pronunciation, despite the fact that it is a made-up name. Um, but there we are. Uh, but anyway, before we pick up where we left off, I do want to just do some kind of bookkeeping kind of updates. Right, so I have... So the way that I generated this dungeon, I mentioned before in a previous episode, was using Don John's random dungeon generator. So right here I have the whole dungeon map, and then each room has a description right in this list here. And that description tells me if there's any treasure, what it is, what kinds of doors we're dealing with, what kind of monsters there are. Now this is a generic dungeon though, so a lot of the monsters are very generic, and things that I don't necessarily have an equivalent of in DCC. Right, so for example, here we have a medium monstrous spider. There are no monstrous spiders in the DCC book. I could make one up and try to stat it out, but honestly, I don't have to do that because I'm just doing this for fun. And statting out a monster on camera does not sound particularly fun to me. Right, so instead what I do is just kind of look for the most uh, relevant equivalent right, within the book. So... What I realized is that some of these don't really have very good equivalents. So, like, like for example, a, a warrior drow elf. Right? It, there is not going to be a monster like that. So I would actually have to stat out an entire first level elf for us to fight, and that would take a lot of time that I would not want to deal with. I would not want to deal with that because I'm trying not to look at the descriptions. Remember, until I get into the room. So that creates some barriers. So instead, what I did, I'm going to use a little different technique. So I will use the dungeon description to figure out whether there is a monster in the room and then to figure out what monster is in the room i'm using this sheet here from iron sworn delve right so one thing that it has on it is this list of denizens right and you can have them listed like this is very i decided ghouls are very common in this dungeon rat swarms are common uh very rare would be the giant scorpion like we found Right, so that is how this is all going to work out. Right, so as we encounter thing, as we encounter monsters, I will roll on this table. It's a D100 table. Uh, so if I roll, say, Z, uh, 1 through 27, then it's a ghoul. 28 through 41, it's a rat swarm, and so on. And what I will do, um, if I roll something that is blank, then I have what I just created the other day. And this is the list of all of the monsters that are listed in the DCC book. So everything from cave octopus to subhuman or whatever. Uh, there, there are 69 different monsters, which I think is pretty nice. Uh, then they also have 14 different men and magicians. I don't think that there are men in this dungeon. Right, so I'm not going to bother with uh, any of those 14, so instead I'm just going to stick with the 79 monsters. And so if I roll a blank, then I will roll on the monster table, whatever that is, I will produce. Uh, in order to adjust the size of the encounter, what I'm going to do is, uh, whenever I encounter something, the first time I'm just going to assume that there's only one of that thing. And if one of that thing is really hard, or the kind of thing I'm going to run away from, like the giant scorpion we found out, <laughs> like 60 hit points or something like that, there's no way we're going to be able to deal with it. Right. So if it's something that's really hard, I will make it more rare. If it's something that's relatively easy, then I'm going to make it more common, but I will increase the number. So last time we fought a rat swarm, the rat swarm didn't really do a whole lot of damage. It did, it did some, we, we took a couple hit points of damage, I think. Uh, but I think next time if we hit rat swarms, there are going to be two of them. Right, so I just added a times two to that. Ghouls, it was a it was a while back, certainly a while back in real life since I played that one. I don't remember, so I'm just going to keep it at one. And then we'll adjust it. Right? And if it turns out two rat swarms are really hard, then I'll just back down to one. So you might go back and forth between one and two if something is easy, then hard, easy, then hard, and so on. Okay, Because naturally some of the ease or difficulty comes from how you roll. So uh, that is my new plan for figuring out what encounters are going to be. Now, I will possibly, you know, roll for random encounters and that kind of thing uh, as feels appropriate. All right. So another thing that I wanted to uh, mention was that I had mentioned before where I was doing some kind of system 
where I was trying to roll based on how many rooms were left, but I was rolling low numbers for some reason. I it's like if I rolled a one, then I found the sword right now because there are still like fifty four rooms left to search or something along those lines. Um, but like the math there doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So here's what I'm going to do now for seeing is the sword in the room that I'm currently searching. So here's what my new rule is, which I've written down here on my Iron Sword of Delve site worksheet. It's is the sword here if the roll that I do on a d20 is greater than the number of areas yet unexplored, right? Uh, then yes, it's here. And now if I roll a natural 20, then it's here. And now with the last room, if I get all the way down to there's only one room left, there's a 50-50 chance that it's in that room and a 50-50 chance that it just wasn't in this dungeon at all. Now I will say with there being over 50 rooms left to search, the odds of us not finding it are vanishingly small, right? So it's probably here in the dungeon somewhere. Although every time that I search a room and don't find it, the odds that it's here become a little bit less. Okay. All right, so that's just kind of, um, I guess, bookkeeping stuff. So right now, where we are in the dungeon, I'm going to go ahead and share my map. Here we are. So we came in through the dungeon. It came into here. We went up to room 47. Uh, room 47, I think, is where we found the ghoul and fought it and fought it off without too much problem. We searched that room, no sword. Right, then we checked this room number 46. Uh, room number 46 is, you can see I put a U here to indicate that it's unsearched because that's where we open it, found the giant scorpion. It was supposed to be a giant spider, but I'm going to retcon that it was actually a scorpion, which would explain even more why we said, no way, forget this, we're out. All right, so we ran away and did not search that room. Uh, then down, we came down this corridor around the corner here to room number 31. Uh, room number 31 was where we fought a rat swarm. Uh, we did manage to fight it off and defeat that without too much difficulty. But, uh, we searched it. We did find uh, some very nice treasure. I want to say it was like a, a dragon scepter worth like 3,000 gold or something like that. Nice, right? Uh, but no sword. So now we're trying to figure out where we want to go from here. So uh, the way I'm looking at it, I have a couple, and there are naturally lots of routes that I can follow through this. Um, it doesn't look like there are any real, like, dead ends or anything like that, where, like, there's only one way to go to a particular room. So, what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to go... Corn between going down to 48 and going into 10. Like, 10 is just through an archway. So, I think I'm going to... <laughs> my elbow, <laughs> my dice tray, <laughs> where my d20 was, I felt like there was something, you know, or being against it or something. I do occasionally get mice and chipmunks in this garage, so, you know, ah, become, if, if there is a mouse coming up and touching my elbow, I'm going to get it checked for rabies or something. All right, so I think I'm going to check this room number 10. All right, so room number 10, it looks like in terms of dimensions, uh, remember these are, each of these squares indicates actually two squares, so it looks like it's going to be six by 10 uh, in terms of its dimension. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that out. All right, so it's six by ten. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So here's one corner we're coming in this way, right through an archway. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And here's another corner over here. So that's what we've got here. Uh, other ways out there is, I mean, I, I don't think that I have any secret doors because I realized that there's no way that I can do secret doors practically, uh, but there is some kind of door that is shut up this way. So I'll just go ahead and do that to indicate there's a door here. And then there's also a door down in this corner. There we go. All right, so that is that. All right, so marching order. I think it makes sense, like we've been doing. We're going to have one of the thieves go in first. Phineas is the thief that has more HP, so we're going to send him in first. Right, and then we'll have Mar, Vilbo, Helmut, and Igor picking up the rear. There we go. Okay, cool. So Phineas sneaks into the room as quietly as he can. Um, and... 
let's see what he finds. So this is room number 10. So searching through room number 10. So this is an archway. Okay. Um, room features. There's a wooden ladder that rests against the north wall, and a pile of empty flasks lies in the southeast corner of the room. The southeast would be over here near this doorway. Uh, oh, wait, you can't actually see that because of how I have things placed. So over here near this door would be the southeast corner. Um, otherwise, the room is empty. That's it. So it looks like this is a safe place to come in. And so let's go ahead and I'll all kind of come into here. There's a ladder along one side. So I'm wondering, does one of us want to grab that ladder? It actually makes perfect sense for us to do that. Um, let's see, because we have 10 foot pole. Um, I think it makes sense for one of the people pulling up the rear, so it would not be one of the thieves, so one of the clerics. Who's the stronger cleric? Helmut. Helmut is going to take and carry that ladder. And so I'm just going to put here Helmut ladder. All right, so we took the ladder there. So I'm going to actually mark out that that wooden ladder no longer rests against the north wall. So if I return, the empty flasks I don't think will be that useful, so I'm just going to kind of leave that. So then we do have these two doors. We can go south or we can go north. Uh, checking out the map that we have. Okay. Oh, we need to search. Okay, so is the sword in this room? 18, 18 is a no. All right, so then I can put a check mark in this room. So at this point, we've searched three of the rooms, of which there are 57. So 54 rooms left to search. All right. So if we go north, that's going to be to room 49. Or we could head south, right through this hallway. So south goes through the hallway in the lower right corner, or the upper left corner, uh, and goes into another room. I think I'm going to go through that upper left corner. Right, so this door, we're going to go up, we're going to, I'm going to have Phineas try it. Uh, I think, who's good at picking locks? Picking locks, okay, actually, Phineas and Marv are equivalent. So I'm going to have Phineas do it, just in case there's a trap or something. Right, so, Phineas is going to uh, come to this door, and what we find is that the door, I believe, is locked. I think that was the note that I saw. So the north entry, number one. Yes, it's a lock. It's a locked, good wooden door. It's a good lock. Uh, slides down, so I'm guessing that the door will slide down once you manage to unlock it. All right. So let's go ahead and do this. So I'm going to go ahead and roll. All right. So if it's a good lock, that means it's probably going to be a little bit more difficult for us to unlock. All right. So I'm going to double check DCC and what their guidelines are. Uh, generally speaking, ten is something that is that requires a certain amount of expertise to do. Um, not that it's super hard or whatever. Uh, then you're just moving toward 15 or 20. Um, so, pick a lock. A mundane lock is DC 10. An extremely well-crafted lock is DC 20. Some locks of legendary manufacture DC 15. All right, so this specifically says it's a good lock. So I'm gonna say it's a DC 15 for us to get through it. So it's not just a mundane lock, but it's not a super good lock. It's, it's a Good luck, not an excellent lock. So 15, and I get a, uh, I believe it's a plus one. Uh, my agility modifier also matters here. So it's, oh, oh, actually, so I get a plus three total on this. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Roll one. All right, well, I mean, that wasn't even close. So it's not worth spending luck on that. Uh, no, we, we, we don't manage uh, to do that. In fact, uh, do I? Have, I don't have like lock picks or something like that. Yeah, not specifically. All right. So I'm gonna say that at this point I've mangled the lock so much that this lock is just destroyed, uh, and we cannot get through this door this way. So I'm just gonna make a note of that as well. So, so this door lock jammed. I can also make a note of that at room 49. 
Oh dear. It's a lock jam for that one. Oh well, I guess we're gonna go out the other way. What happens? So Phineas is gonna come over here. Um, oh, one thing that I forgot to do before, so I got really lucky that wasn't trapped. I'm going to check for traps. So first thing, let's find a trap. Uh, so he is a one on this. How about Marv? Marv is better. Marv has a plus three. And then it would also include his intelligence. Oh, this is actually a plus two then. So Marv is going to come here, roll it a plus two. That's an eight. So probably will not find any trap if there is one there. So Charles says, all right, so I'm going to try uh, this door, see if it's locked. Uh, this is going to lead me uh, down a hallway. So south entry, oh, it's unlocked. So it's an unlocked strong wooden door. It looks like there are no traps. So we got lucky. All right, so we head down the hallway, uh, having opened this door. And we're going to resume our regular pattern. So Phineas, followed by Marv, Vilbo, uh, Helmut and Igor. That's our marching order. Uh, and we walk down the hallway. And I'm going to say that, like, it makes sense. We are aware that there may be traps here. We have not encountered any yet, but we're aware that there may be traps. So Phineas is actually taking one of the things that we have. He actually, he himself is carrying a 10 foot pole. So he's like poking ahead of him at like, you know, trying to hit the floor, that kind of thing, just in case. There happens to be a trap or something. Turns out when we get halfway down this hallway, uh, we do hit feature letter N. N is a narrow shaft that falls into the corridor from above. Okay, so we, we get to that point. I was worried there might be a trap there. There is no trap, but up above, we can see that there is a, a, a narrow shaft. Uh, I mean, I don't think we're going to try to deal with that. We do have a ladder. We could go up and check it. Uh, but we're pretty sure, based on the information we have, this is just a one-level uh, dungeon. There is no need for us to try to like climb up this shaft or something like that. All right, so we continue down until we find another door uh, that leads into room number 26. Now, this room, in terms of its dimensions, is 6 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it's 14. All right, so it's going to be a little bit longer than this. It's just gonna go this way and then have one additional. Okay. So there we are. Let's make sure that I get all the entrances correct. So we're coming in this way. We're coming in from the north. In this northeast corner. So there, there's no door here. Instead, the door comes in this way. Okay. And then there's another door uh, heading out of right about here. Okay. And these are both definitely doors. So we get to the first door that goes in through number 26. Uh, again, I'm going to have, uh, what do we say, Marv is the best at finding traps. So Marv is going to check for traps here. So he's at a plus two. Uh, this is a 12. And so if it's a, a standard trap, you would find it. Uh, so let's find out. So 26. So number 26, north entry. It's an unlocked, simple wooden door. No trap mentioned. So no trap. Okay, so, and again, he checks the lock. Nothing there. All right, so opens the uh, door. We go in. Uh, and what do we find? Room features. A stone dais and throne sit in the center of the room, and flickering motes of shadow fill the center of the room. All right, so that's it. So there's a, a throne right here in the center or so. All right, so we walk in, and we're going to search this room as well. Um, that's definitely not it. So, so we need to roll a 20 for it to be the sword. There is no sword here, right? So we have now searched room number 26. Nothing. Okay. Uh, so we're going to try that other door. Uh, so the, the west entry here, uh, this is a stuck good wooden door. So we go to try to open it. Um, it is clearly not locked, but we are we are having difficulty. 
at opening it. So at this point, we need to make some strength rolls. So what I'm going to do, who, who's the strongest person in our group? Well, not Vilbo, that's for sure. We don't have a very strong group. So the highest strength amongst any of them is a 10. Right, so if Helmut is strong at, well, not super strong, but is 10. And uh, Phineas is also a 10, right? So I think that what we're going to do then is have one of them, right? Try to just like shoulder through the door. Okay, so I'm going to say, let's try Phineas first. He's going to shoulder his way through this door. And let's see if this works, right? So, because I don't think, like when I look at abilities, yeah, there's really nothing here that looks like it would be that helpful. Uh, and I just realized something. One thing that sneaking and hiding is something that Vilbo is really good at. Note it. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and see if we can knock this door down. So Phineas goes ahead to take a cry at this. Uh, I'm going to say we need a, let's say a 15. No modifier on it. Got a 14. Well, in that case, this is a good time to go ahead and spend a luck point. He doesn't have many luck points, but he has a total of five. So I'm going to make it four. Spend one to increase that up to 15. All right, so with a bit of luck, he manages to shoulder his way right through this door, uh, and it opens into a hallway. All right, so then we're going to continue walking down this hallway. Uh, you know, work our way, right? There's a little turn in this hallway. We are you know, tapping with the um, 10 foot pole. I don't see any features listed here, so there's really nothing we have to worry about until we get to uh, it's room number 28, which is kind of an a, it looks like it's hexagonal or diagonal or something, right? So we have this octagonal room. And in this octagonal room, coming from this direction, there is a wooden, or oh wait, we're coming from the east. So it's a wooden plus, so I'm guessing that we, we should be able to get through it without too much problem. Um, and it's wooden, at the very least, we can just, so we do have some woodmen here, right? Let's see what what were people's? No, the woodmen all died. Ah. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> never mind about that. Although we do have their axes, I'm pretty sure somebody is having their axes. Yes, yes, Vilbo has the axes, right? So without too much problem, if we do have to cut through it, sure, we can we can cut through this uh, port calls to get into room number twenty eight. What we find in room number twenty eight is. That it's empty. No no features at all, right? No encounters. Now we have searched several rooms here, so I'm wondering whether we might hit a random encounter. So I'm just gonna check for that. I'm gonna roll a d6. If it's a six, then there's a random encounter here. Oh, there is. Yeah, there it is. All right, so we come into the room. It's octagonal, so I'm going to go ahead and draw that out. It looks like the diameter, yeah, sure, we'll go with the diameter. It's about 10. So So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? So and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So here we go. Something like this. So these are the corners, and then we need to basically just yeah, how's this how's this gonna look? Okay, so we have points happening halfway. And here's a point. Here and here are points. And then we'll have a point right around here, 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 and here. And I'm just going to draw these lines in here. Now there will be some doors around. My drawing is not particularly great. Yeah, I probably should have pushed those points out a little bit more. Oh, well. Wow. Whatever. So we're coming in this side where there's a door. Now where we knocked out the portcullis away. Uh, there is also just so where there is a door up here. 
<laughs> there is. Now there is a door up top. So up here there's a door. There's also oh there is a secret door to the south. Like the only secret door in the dungeon. So we're gonna have to find that. Right, and then there's also a little hallway up here that goes off to a door. There we go. Oh, it's a portcullis up there, actually. All right. So we're going to head into room number 28. And room number 28, we found that there is a random encounter. So it is Phineas. Oh, wait, no. We decided that Vilbo is a good sneaker. So what does Vilbo see in this room? So first thing I'm going to do is roll my D100. So my D100 will tell me if it's something that's already on my list, or is it something new? It's a 31. Uh, 31, we've actually already defined. It is uh, two rat swarms are in this room. Okay. So, because last time I used like a piece of paper or something, and I didn't take the time to make a better rat swarm yet. Right, so I mean, we know it's going to be a two by two square where these rat swarms are. So I'm just going to say that there's one of them here. There's one of them here. And I'll just draw however they move. All right, so rat swarm is on page 424 in the DCC book, which is a reminder of what's going on there. Okay, there we are. Rat swarm. Excellent. So we need to decide, is it worthwhile to deal with these things? Right, so Vilbo is going to try to sneak in, right? And so let's go ahead and see if he manages to do that. Right, so he's going to try to sneak. Uh, he gets a plus three, I believe, on this. It's just a plain old plus three. Yeah, so sneaking and hiding. Right, so he's sneaking at a plus three. Well, so he would be able to sneak pretty well. I'm going to say he probably can manage. Uh, these rat swarms are not particularly interested in him. So I'm going to say he can probably manage to sneak through. Now, that is, however, going to be a challenge for anybody else. So he's going to go ahead and search this room uh, to see if this is where the sword is. Right. Uh, so I'm going to say that he can do that. So he's going to search the room. We're going to roll again. Remember, if he rolls a 20, it is here. It is instead of 5. It is not here. Right. So no sword in this room. Okay, so room number 28 has been searched. Uh, I'm going to make a note here that we in fact do have rat swarms in here. Rat swarm times two is in that room. All right, cool. Now, do we all want to try to sneak through here get to the other side, or do we want to go back a different way? Because there is a door up here to go through. We could come over here, but that means going past these rat swarms. Vilbo's, Vilbo's nice and sneaky. Some of the other ones are not. I mean, we have Vilbo as a halfling, and then we also have two thieves. They might possibly be able to sneak through without much problem. But then our, our clerics, I mean, one of them's carrying a ladder. Probably not going to be able to sneak very well. And sneak is not one of their abilities. So I'm going to say that, that that is probably not a very viable plan. Um, and I am not keen on splitting the party right now. So I'm going to say we go back the way we came. Okay, so we're going to go back. Uh, let me pull out the map. Okay, so we are here. We're going to come back down this hallway uh, through this empty room. Right, back up this hallway, past that narrow shaft, and up here, 31, and then we have this door you could possibly go through. So we're going to start at 31 again, and check that door. All right. So, uh, it's going to be Phineas, I believe. Is Phineas the one for finding traps? I always I forget what my characters can do. I also forget where I, where I put their, their sheets sometimes. This is what solo gaming is sometimes like. You have so many materials that you just kind of get lost amongst them. All right. So to find traps, no, it's Marv. So Marv is going to check this for traps. Get it a plus two. He got a total of six. Yeah, I think that that would not be, that would not find it. 
So if there is a trap, he's gonna set it off. Uh, and let's check. So this is room number something. There it is. Uh, room number thirty-one. Thirty-one. The south. It's oh, it's an unlocked good wooden door. So. Uh, doesn't have to bother picking a lock or anything. We go through, no problems. And then we come to room number 48. Room number 48 is a 10 by 10 uh, square room. Uh, and it has some kind of door here. So let's go ahead and check it for traps. Marv is going to do this. Oh, that's a good roll. All right, so we got 15 plus another two, so 17. So if there's a trap there, he will find it. So let's check room number 48, the north entry, see if there is a trap there. Uh, room number 48. There it is. Uh, north entry, it's a locked stone door. So he's it's a common lock, so not a good lock. So we're going to need somebody to try to pick this lock. Uh, so picking the lock, both of my folks are to plus one. So let's have... Yeah, let's just have Marv do it. All right, so Marv is going to go ahead. This is at a plus one, plus agility. So he's actually at plus two. Oh, wait, no, Phineas is better, because he has a better agility. So let's do Phineas do it at plus three. He needs a 10. Got a seven. It's not going to ruin it. Let's try again. Also failed. And, oh, come on, two. Okay, we're, we're, we're counting toward a one here ah there we go okay. so he did manage finally after several attempts right to get through cool right so poor phineas does manage eventually to get us into this room at which point we're going to send vilbo in to spy it out so vilbo let's go ahead and roll he gets a plus three on this for sneaking oh 22 awesome so whatever is in there is going to be basically totally unaware of this very sneaky halfling so here's what we learn about room number 48. Uh, there are skeletons that hang from chains, manacles against the north and south walls, and clouds of flying insects fill the south side of the room. There is, in this room, a hidden treasure. So the question is, would Vilvo be able to find that treasure? So in order to find things, searches are generally uh, treated as a luck roll. So that is what I'm going to do here for Vilbo. So Vilbo's going to search. He has a luck score of 11. So if uh, his temporary luck score is 11, normally it's 16, but based on his current luck level. Right, so if he rolls an 11 or less, then yes, he does find this hidden chest. He rolled a 6. Right, so that's a yes. Right, so he does find this chest. But the problem is that it's locked. So you're going to need one of the thieves to come in and try to pick this lock. Again, uh, Phineas is the one that's best at this. And it is, what kind of lock would we say? It is a common lock, so we just need 10 or higher, and he gets a plus 3 on it. Oh, awesome. He rolled a 10. So we got 13. We managed to unlock it, and what we find in here is 1,000 copper pieces, uh, a set of full plate armor. That's what it says. Full plate armor. Uh, worth 1,500 gold. That's, that's way more than what full plate armor runs in. <laughs> so I'm going to say this full plate armor is extremely ornate, uh, because normally full plate armor, I mean, just to tell you the, the, the typical cost of this is like nothing, nothing like this. Okay, so full plate armor. There we go. Full plate normally costs, oh, actually it's 1200, so it's not way off. Oh, that's really good. All right, so full plate armor, nice. And a thousand copper pieces is not terrible, I guess. All right, so we go ahead, we grab the copper pieces or stick them in. We have several, several of my people have sacks and backpacks and the like, so we'll stick the copper pieces in there. I think I want somebody to wear the full plate. Now, as looking at my time, I think I'm going to want to wrap up here. So this was a fairly calm um, search so far. Um, so I do want somebody to wear the full plate, but let's go ahead, since there is no encounter here, let's have everybody else come in. We're going to check to see, do we have the sword in this room? Five, the answer is no. Okay, so this room is now searched. 
Right. And that is where we are going to stop. So we stop here in room number 48. Okay. Uh, and I think I'm going to have somebody put on the full plate. And it makes sense it's going to be one of the clerics because um, armor doesn't really affect them. And that is really going to improve their AC. Right. So I'm not sure which of the clerics I'm going to have where it at this point. I mean, it could be, I think, Helmet and I Igor is the one that has fewer hit points. Right. So, and part of me says that that means we just shouldn't send him into battle. The helmet is the helmet is effectively our our battle cleric, uh, and Igor can kind of stand in the back and worry about working like little bits of magic and the like. So that may be the, the way that I want to handle this. Uh, as it is right now, like when I actually Igor is already wearing armor. Uh, he's he's wearing a padded armor. All right, so I think I'm going to wrap it there. Um, we are continuing to explore. And so at this point, we have explored this room, this room, this room, this room, this room, and this room. No sword here. This one, we don't know if the sword is there because there is instead a giant scorpion. Okay. Uh, we left some rat swarms in here as well. All right, so next time I think we're going to continue down this southern path through this portcullis, and then we'll check room number 14, and that allows us also to kind of get around room number 28, which has a couple of rat swarms that we just didn't want to deal with, because it didn't seem worth it. All right, so I'm going to call it there. This one, nobody gets any XP for it, because we really didn't have to expend any... Oh, wait, we didn't have to expend a luck point, so I'm going to say everybody gets one XP for that. But this was a relatively low XP um, session, as far as that goes. Because remember, the way that um, the way that we handle things is: Did you survive the encounter? And if you survived it, how expensive was it? Right. So if nobody died, then that means we probably are going to be two or fewer. And if you didn't actually like lose any HP, if you didn't actually use any luck points or anything like that then you might actually get no XP at all. So I think like, the encounters here, if it's just you sneak in, you sneak out, and that's that, I'm inclined to say, mm, I'm not going to give any XP for that. Right? So I think everybody just gets one right for that luck point that did have to be spent to knock down that one door. And we will call it there. So uh, until next time, this is Profi signing off.